The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of our Lord. It's a dark and stormy late summer evening. I am in my early teen years sitting in the back of the family minivan, likely pretending I wasn't sitting in the back of the family minivan. My two younger sisters are in the seats ahead of me. My dad is driving, my mom is in the passenger seat. We are on our way back from a late evening softball game that I was playing in about 45 minutes away from home. The game had finished just in time as lightning was beginning to flicker on the horizon. We are about 10 minutes into our journey home on the highway when all of a sudden the wind picks up making the sound of an oncoming freight train. The frequent flashes of lightning made it seem like daylight and the amount of rain makes it feel like we are stuck in an unending car wash. The van is actually shuddering from the wind. It is a heart-stopping few minutes, made all the more so when I overhear my dad say to my mom, I don't know where we are. I can't see a thing. Are we still on the road? Keep in mind, this was back in the day before cell phones or Google Maps or any kind of GPS. We had no screen to map our place to let us know if we were indeed still on the road or whether we were off in the rhubarb somewhere. It seemed to me at the time that we were stuck in that deluge for about an hour, when in all reality it was actually only about five or ten minutes or so, just a downburst. Eventually the weather eased and we could proceed on our way home once again. Now traveling with a family of my own, Google Maps is never far from reach. This travel tool has rerouted us, warned us of traffic snarls, oncoming construction, and guided us safely through unknown territory more times than I can count. We can even check the weather. It has become an essential part of any road trip, laying out a predictable path and providing us with the most efficient way to get there. The only heart-stopping moments these days is when we lose signal and the familiar voice from my phone ceases to talk to us, rendering us lost for a moment or two. The road down to Jerusalem from Jericho was a dangerous stretch. You didn't want to stop there. It wasn't the place to pull over. In our modern day, this proposed route on our Google Maps might prompt us to opt for a different choice of paths laid out in our GPS to ensure our safe arrival. 
If he could, the one in the ditch could attest to the fact that this was not the safest stretch of road. The story of the Good Samaritan is probably one of the most familiar stories in the Bible. It may be one of the earliest stories we remember hearing in church or in Sunday school. The characters, the priest, the Levite, the man in the ditch, the Samaritan, and of course Jesus and the lawyer all have a role to play. In my most recent reading and studying of this text, I was struck this time by the lawyer or the scribe. It seems like in his questions, the lawyer is looking for a roadmap to salvation. He wants to hear about the proposed route Jesus would take to maybe see how it compares to the route he is most familiar with. What must I do to inherit eternal life, Jesus? Or what is my roadmap for getting there? The scriptures tell us that the lawyer was testing Jesus. It was his job as a lawyer or a scribe to be well-versed in the laws of the Torah. In true to form, the lawyer demonstrates that he does indeed know his stuff, reciting the law without barely even thinking. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Even Jesus affirms this answer. You have answered correctly, he said. Do this and you will live. But the lawyer presses on. And he responds to Jesus with, but who is my neighbor? And then this is when Jesus uses a parable to blow the conversation wide open, thereby stretching the lawyer's understanding of a very familiar and predictable law. Imploring him, I think, to consider that law of loving God and loving neighbor through the lens of love and gospel. He understands the law on paper, but does he know what it means to live it according to Jesus' teachings? So in the story Jesus tells, along comes a priest and a Levite on that dangerous, lonely road, and they choose to ignore the beaten one in the ditch for whatever reason. Maybe they were afraid it was a trap. Maybe they were so bound by their own rules and laws and the institution that they represent that they will not risk getting bloodied and dirty by getting down in the ditch with the one in need. Whatever their reason, they cannot and will not bring themselves to any merciful action to help the person lying there so helpless. So they cross the road and proceed on their way. And then along comes the Samaritan an outsider and sworn enemy and unlikely hero going above and beyond to offer care and love to the one in need. The Samaritan takes a risk by stopping on this dangerous road. He shows compassion and mercy to one outside of his community, someone not at all like him. He dresses the wounds of the man in the ditch and then he uses his own resources to ensure continuing care so healing can occur. In the telling of this parable, Jesus has changed the traditional rules. Can you imagine what this must have done to the neatly ordered world of the lawyer as Jesus is telling this story? This neatly ordered, well-versed world of the scribe with all his studying of the Torah and knowledge of the laws as they existed in very concrete and predictable terms. Can you imagine what Jesus' teachings would do to the very institution the lawyer represents? Jesus has changed the rules and veered off the known course. The once familiar roadmap of life and order has been turned upside down the voice of the GPS now beckoning the traveler along a new way and a new route. Jesus has juxtaposed the scribe's understanding of the law with Jesus' understanding of the law. Jewish philosopher Martin Buber has written that this kingdom of God is the kingdom of danger and risk, of eternal beginning and eternal becoming of open spirit and deep realization, a kingdom of holy insecurity, 
I love that. The kingdom of holy insecurity. Maybe this is what a journey of faith is all about. For it's in the holy insecurity and resulting vulnerability where our hearts are opened to see the other and to meet the other where they're at. To realize that we all share a common humanity and to come to terms with just how wide God continues to draw the circle. Maybe this is where we move past the point of thoughts and prayers only. And when we are spurred on to a faith lived out through holy action, holy care, and holy love. But oh my, it can be hard. Every day in our walk of faith, we are faced with the decision to take risks, to become vulnerable, to get down in the ditch and offer care, compassion, help, and hope. Some days we do just that. Other days, we're the priest and the Levite, crossing the road and hurrying on our way. Some days, we're a really awesome Good Samaritan. Other days, not so much. But all days, we are called by God's love to keep trying and to do as Jesus did and draw that circle wide and then wider still. Using Jesus' root on our holy GPS means letting go of certainty, giving up what might be easiest and safest, and it frequently means getting messy. In the Evolving Faith podcast from May 25th of this year, Jeff Chu spoke about the messy, unpredictable nature of faith. He says that we all cling to clarity but that faith calls us to let go of clarity and to seek trust and to lean into trusting God instead. Doing so, he says, allows your mess to be messy. It allows your heart to wander and your questions to morph into half answers in their own good time because faith resists clear binaries. And what gets us through in the meantime is growing to know and trust that we still have God's love. Through all the uncertainty, God's love remains. God's love is the thing that makes everything whole. And this is not our doing. This is God's work. And it's God's love that creates grace for what's still in process. Even on those days when we cannot feel God's love in its completeness, the promise of this love is enough, and it helps us to embrace the uncertainty of faith each and every day. The Good Samaritan is a story for travelers on the road. Through it, Jesus provides us with a map, the GPS coordinates to the abundant and more intimate life that God desires with each of us. Getting there is guaranteed to be an adventure. It's rarely a straightforward journey. Sometimes it's risky, oftentimes it's uncertain. But it's in this exact moment of vulnerability where we meet and know God most readily, where we encounter God's spirit already working, already doing her thing. How blessed are we that she takes us along for the ride? along Jesus' chosen route of love, hope, care, and compassion, along Jesus' way home.